All right, let's talk about one of my favorite drummers, Bill Stewart, and his ride cymbal sounds. So the first time I heard Bill Stewart was on a Pat Metheny trio record, and the first thing that struck me was, holy cow, Bill's main ride cymbal sounds like heaven. It's smoky, it's dark, it's complex, it's got a little bit of trash to it. I have got to find a cymbal like that. Uh, a big box cymbal manufacturer put out a cymbal that was designed with Bill called the Dry Complex Ride, and Bill used that cymbal on a lot of records and that became like his main sound and so i was looking out for a dry complex i i was scouring the internet uh they had been discontinued by the time i was looking so it was very hard to find them they were very expensive long story short i found one and i got it and i pulled it out of the box hit it and immediately i was struck by how loud it was it was really aggressive very in your face which surprised me. I wasn't expecting that. Uh, I took it to a gig that weekend, and within four measures, the saxophone player turned around and was like, stop playing that ride. He basically just was like, go to a quieter cymbal, please. And I realized that it, it was a good cymbal for Bill, and it worked in louder uh, settings where they were using electric amps, but it wasn't great for low-volume stuff. And I sadly sold that cymbal, and gave up on my dreams of sounding like Bill Stewart. Um, fast forward to now, I'm a symbol maker and a symbol modifier, and I've been doing this since 2017. And I have been wanting to prototype a symbol, make a, a series of symbols really that gave you some of the Bill Stewart vibes, but you could use it in lower volume music and it would have a little bit more subtlety and nuance to it. You could crash it, uh, and it would be really nice in that kind of setting, but then you could also dig in and really get that uh, aggressive woody click and trash that that symbol has. So we are going to talk about Bill Stewart's sound, how he gets that sound via his technique and how he sets the symbols up, and then we're going to talk about these two symbols I have in front of me, which I have... Uh, designed with Bill's sound in mind. All right, so first up, let's talk about Bill's playing technique and the way that he sets up his cymbals. Now, one of the things you'll notice if you watch clips of Bill playing is that his thumb is on top of the stick. And every now and then you'll see his thumb come up like this on the stick, and it's almost like he's driving the top of his thumb into the stick when he's playing the ride. Uh, and I've listened to some interviews of Bill, and he talks about how he doesn't think so much about doing this, but what he does think about is sometimes gripping the stick a little bit tighter uh, in order to get a more articulate sound. And what I find that that does is the vibrations that are coming up the stick itself, you're kind of choking those vibrations. You're not allowing the stick to vibrate and resonate. So the cymbal is vibrating and resonating, but the stick is as well. And when you grip the stick a little tighter and or you put the thumb on top like this, you are actually hindering the stick from resonating and you are driving that energy into the symbol. And uh, what it results in is a, a drier, more articulate, woodier sound coming from your symbol. Now with Bill's symbols, what he'll typically do is he will either add a felt or just really tighten down the wing nut quite a bit so that the symbol is being compressed between the felt on the top and the felt that's underneath. And this chokes the cymbal somewhat. It doesn't allow a lot of the high-end wash to be thrown off of the cymbal, and it leads to a more articulate sound coming from the stick. Uh, the, the cymbal will feel stiffer. It's not going to be able to move as much, 
And this can be dangerous if you have a really thin symbol and you clamp it and then you really start laying into it. It can cause damage. You can crack your symbol doing this. So be careful doing it. So you combine that with the playing technique and that's really how Bill Stewart goes about uh, achieving that articulate sound. Um, a lot of guys think that they can have a really, really thin cymbal, uh, but have it still have a lot of woody click sound to it. And that's really not possible. You end up sacrificing that click and that articulation the thinner you go with the cymbal. So with these cymbals that I designed, uh, kind of with Bill Stewart in mind, I was also trying to dial uh, the weight in a way that it would be crashable and nuanced and warm, but it wouldn't lose the click and the woodiness, uh, which is a very difficult thing. It's a, it's a balance beam because the thinner you go and the warmer and more nuanced you go, the less articulation you have and vice versa. The heavier it is, the more click and stick you're going to get, but that crash is going to feel really clunky. There are many factors that go into making a cymbal uh, sound a certain way, uh, but one of the biggest factors is just the shape of the cymbal. Uh, the shape of the bell, the shape of how it curves to the edge, that is a huge factor. And you get the shape via the tensioning you do with hammering and or lathing. So uh, the other thing that's unique about these cymbals that's pretty similar to the way Bill's cymbals are is the underside here. You can tell this section on the edge and the underside of the bell has been left unlathed. You first get them into shape with the hammering and then with the lathing, you're shaving away that oxidized crust that forms on the outside of the bronze. So by leaving an unlathed portion at the edge and under the bell, you're taking two areas that are incredibly important to the overall sound of the cymbal and you're just telling them to calm down a little bit, to be a little bit drier uh, and to be a little bit more controlled. Uh, now this one in particular, the 22 and a quarter, has a hand-formed bell, which means that this symbol uh, was an entirely flat blank when I started on it. I found the center hole and I built this bell up uh, by hand. Symbol number two is a 22, just right on 22 inches, and it weighs 2,102 grams. So it is uh, nearly identical in weight given the fact that this one has an extra quarter inch on it. So uh, the difference between these two is this one has a slightly smaller bell, and I actually drew this up into a higher profile than this one. And when we do the playing examples uh, in depth in just a moment, you're going to hear the difference between them. The, the slightly lower profile is going to be a little bit more smooth and warm sounding. And this one has a little bit more of uh, that click and articulation. And it's a little bit more chunky. And the crash is a little less smooth than on the bigger one. Um, just like on the other one, you can tell on the underside that I left that outer edge and I left the underside of the bell. Um, this bell in particular was a pressed bell. So once it's red hot, they'll actually, uh, in the, fa in the factory, they'll actually press the bell shape into it when it's hot and then they'll quench it. So you have this perfectly uniform, uh, bell. And what I do is I modify all my pressed bells as well. So this one has been hammered and you can probably tell with the light, uh, that it's got hammer marks in it. Uh, the lathing on this one is very similar to this one. Uh, there is a taper near the edge, again, just to give it a little bit more ability to flex and move at the edge. Uh, but for the most part, the difference is just that this, is a, this has a taller profile. So uh, that taller profile also inhibits it from moving. It also adds to that articulation a little bit more. Um, but both of these are actually still considered high-profile symbols to get that click and articulation, you really do need a high or a tall profile symbol. Let's put them side by side. Let's play test them. 
I will play them with a stick that is very similar to the tip that Bill uses on his stuff. And then I'll also show you, this will be interesting, uh, just to go in and show you how much that uh, clamping uh, the wing nut down, how much that affects the sound. As a cymbal maker, I don't like to do tribute series. I don't really like to copy cymbals, but for me, it's mostly about the sound and it's mostly about what's functional in musical environments. And really it's about uh, useful colors. So Bill Stewart's sound has always been something that's been deeply influential to me. So being able to kind of take influence that stems from Bill and l let it guide me into making a certain series of cymbals that have these characteristics I've been talking about uh, is what we're going to be doing. So keep an eye out for that. Uh, these are Timothy Roberts handcrafted symbols. Thank you for watching.